Namaste, welcome to Savi's Fashion Studio. I am Savita. In the previous video, we saw how to draft a woman's t-shirt pattern on CAD and we had taken the printout using the plotter. You can do the pattern manually also. It is similar to what you have learned in lesson 2, how to draft a basic body sloper. The only change is we have reduced the length and the ease. And also, we have made a neck band for which you need to measure the front neckline and the back neckline and reduce around one to one and a half inches and that would be the length of the neckband and the width would be double of the ready neckband width for example if i want a neckband of half an inch the pattern width would be one inch and then you'll be adding seam allowance all around this is if you're using the self fabric if you're using a rib fabric then you may reduce around two inches from the length now if you have cad software but don't have a plotter then you can draft the pattern and and take the printout wherever there is a big printer or you can send us the file and we can ship the printout to you or the other option is you can print using your home printer but the thing is for each pattern there will be multiple sheets and you'll have to arrange it stick it and then cut the pattern I'm just showing for your information so this is how you will have to do it so once you get the full pattern, you can cut the pattern. The number of sheets per pattern may change based on the pattern size. So this is at another option. Now in this video, we will cut the fabric and stick the t-shirt using the four thread overlock and flat lock. I'll be using this beautiful silver shimmery four way stretch fabric. This fabric is available on our website in limited quantity. So if you wish to buy, you can buy it there. As this is a double width fabric, I just need around 75 centimeters of the fabric for making this t-shirt. Now I'll be laying it in this way. As these are full patterns, I will not fold the fabric. I'll be laying it on one layer of the fabric. So I'll be placing it this way, marking all around with the fabric marker or chalk and then cutting it i'll not show the cutting part as the video will become lengthy and with the remaining fabric here i'll cut the two sleeves and the neckband so all the patterns i'm placing in straight grain i'll place some fabric weight mark all around and cut the fabric i'm using this water erasable fabric marker So I've cut one back, one front, two sleeves and a neckband. So now we'll start with sewing. I'll just explain here before going to the overlock machine. Place front and back with right sides facing each other and we'll be overlocking the shoulder seams and then we'll be attaching the sleeves and then we'll do the neckband and then we'll be sewing the sides. To finish the bottom hem and the sleeve hem, we'll be using the flat lock. So I'm starting to sew by joining the back and front shoulder seams using my four thread overlock. So I've kept back and front right on right. And as I search, I'll be trimming off one eighth of an inch because the seam allowance we have given is three eighth of an inch and the stitch width is two eighth of an inch and I will also use this Mobilon tape to stabilize the seam. I made a detailed class on why Mobilon tape is used and how it's used. In industries, there are separate folders to use these tapes, but when we do it manually, it's a little tricky, but we can use it. So I'm placing the Mobilon tape aligned with the marking I've done here, and I'm using a white thread for serging. So only the fabric will be trimmed as we serge. The Mobilon tape will not be trimmed because I'm placing it a little lower. Keep both the layers aligned. If you are using a home sewing machine to sew the t-shirt, you can reduce the width and use the zigzag stitch to stitch the shoulder seam. And also make sure you use a suitable needle like ballpoint or jesse needle. I'm taking the next shoulder seam and will stitch the same way as I stitch the other one. This Mobilon tape will stabilize the seam. Though it allows to stretch, it will not let it go out of shape. So this is why it's used. 
so the shoulders are done now we are attaching the sleeve so this is the body this is the front armhole and i'm taking the front part of the sleeve and placing it together again we'll be trimming off one eighth of an inch as we saw make sure there are no wrinkles and it's flat and nice the shoulder seam goes towards the back and the center notch of the sleeve should match with the shoulder seam this matches perfectly Similarly attach the other sleeve. So we have attached the shoulder and the sleeves. Now similarly we will search the side seams on both sides. And as you do that make sure you align the seams under the arms. I am searching the side seam. Make sure the seams under the arm align. Now take the neck band and sew at the short ends and make it one circle. Now fold it in half with the wrong side inside. I will be sewing this to the t-shirt neckline. Now this is the back neckline. Keep this seam of the neck band a little away from the shoulder seam so that the seam goes to the back of the t-shirt so I'm keeping around 3 4 to 1 inch away from the shoulder seam now we'll be surging the same way but we'll have to stretch the neck band slightly so that it matches with the t-shirt neckline because this is cut a little shorter Now you see the neck band is a little shorter than the t-shirt neckline so you need to stretch it to match with the neckline and then stretch. As you search you need to stretch the neck band and try to do it evenly. In the whole t-shirt making I think this is the little trickiest part. So what you can do is you can cut the neckline and neck band in a scrap fabric and practice only this till you get it right. When you are done attaching the neck band, lightly press it keeping the seams down. Now before directly keeping the iron on this fabric, I tried it on a scrap fabric and it's fine. If you are not sure, you can use a thin cotton fabric on top and then press. So the neckline is done and this is how it looks. Now the next step is, this is optional. You can sew this stretch neck tape to the back neckline. This will give stability to the neckline and also it conceals the seam at the back neckline. So only for this we will be using the single needle lock stitch machine and also we will be sewing this brand label and if you have you can also use the size label. After that we will be using the flat lock machine to finish the hem of the sleeve and the bottom hem. So we will be folding the sleeve hem by one inch and lightly press with the steam iron and then we'll be doing the flat lock if you are using your electric home sewing machine you can use the zigzag stitch to finish the hem folding the seam and ironing makes it easy while using the flat lock so fold it by whatever the seam allowance given i had given one inch so fold it and lightly press So 
So do the same for both the sleeves and also for the bottom hem. I folded it and pressed it. Now first we'll sew the neck tape and then we'll do the flat lock. I've turned the t-shirt inside out and this is the back neckline. This is the shoulder seam and this is the other shoulder seam. Now I'm just taking the seam of the back neckline and I'm attaching this neck tape from one shoulder seam to the other. So I'm placing it in this way so that it covers the stitch and I'm stitching this only to the seam here. These stretch neck tapes are available on our website. You can buy it there if you want or you can also use the self fabric that is the fabric with which you're making your t-shirt. These are used in t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts or any knit dress. I'm stitching one edge of the neck tape only to the seam here. This is not a must but this gives a very neat look and also it kind of stabilizes the neckline. I'm not stretching this. I'll stop till the other shoulder and cut off whatever is the excess. I'm placing the shoulder seams together and marking the center of the back neckline. This is just to help in centering the brand label. I'm using this water erasable pen which will easily go off when washed. I'll also fold the label and find the center and it will be placed in this way. So now we'll be sewing the other side of the neck tape to the t-shirt. I'll also use the size label. So using a neck tape makes it look neat and also it allows you to insert the brand label and size label. So the second stitch that we made in the neck tape will show on the right side of the garment. So when you stitch the second stitch, try to stitch it as evenly as possible. So this is done. Now we'll go to the flat lock machine. This is a five thread flat lock machine. You get flat bed or cylinder bed in this. This is mainly used to finish the hem of the knit fabrics. You can use two thread, three thread, four or five threads. I'll try to make a detailed video on this soon. Before stitching the t-shirt hem, let me show on this scrap fabric because the t-shirt is white and the thread is white so it may not be visible. Let me show how the stitches would be. This is a similar fabric. Now how the hem is stitched is, for example, if there is a one inch fold, the right side of the fabric will be on top and there is a pedal to lift the presser foot. I'm only using the left and right needle. I'm not using the center needle. We can use all the three needles to get three stitches or we can use two or one. So I'm using two needles. I'm doing it slow. You can go faster also. There is no locking option in this machine. After stitching, you can do a bar tack to close the stitch. So there are two parallel stitches here. And so this is how it looks on the inside. And why this machine is used in finishing the hem of the knit dresses or t-shirts is because the stitches stretch along with the fabric. It does not break. There is also an option to use top looper. We can use a fancy thread or metallic thread and it can become a design element which I'll be showing when we do a detailed class on this machine. So now I'll be sewing the t-shirt in the same way. When I'm sewing the t-shirt, the stitches may not show because the color of the thread is same. That's the reason I showed you on this scrap. I'm sewing the bottom hem. I'm feeling the edge of the turned fabric. There's this edge on the right side and aligning it to the needle here. So throughout I'll be maintaining the same distance. Now this is why ironing the hem helps because if not you will have to fold the fabric as well as manage this. So once you have ironed it is in place and it's easier. A 
after sewing a little just turn and see that the stitches are falling to the edge and it's fine continue till you reach the same point where you started and overlap the stitches slightly and then cut it off so this is where I started The stitches may not be visible but I'll just stretch and show and this is how it's on the wrong side and you see it's smooth there's no puckering now similarly we'll do the sleeves So this is done. I've also made another in small size. Let me show how it looks. Thanks for watching this class. If you do make a t-shirt watching this video, please share the image on our website servicefashionstudio.com. See you soon in the next class. Until then, happy sewing.